Yeah, because uh, the Tokyo achievement uh, wasn't really what I expected, but the best way to move on is to move forward and to win the next competition. Hi, I'm Azran, and today I'm joined by Pandalila Renault. At 28, she's a veteran of four uh, Olympic Games, including medaling in uh, London with a bronze, uh, Rio, a silver, uh, and you recently came back from Tokyo. But Leila, thank you very much for joining us today. So I want to start by asking you, from the age of 15 at your first Beijing Olympics to now, what drives you? What keeps you going? Mm, I think it's my passion in diving that keeps me going and to continue diving for Malaysia. How did you find that passion? How did you discover that passion? Mm, I think it's because um, I, I'm an adventurous kid okay. and I'm always curious and I get to fulfill that curiosity in diving. Right. Yeah. So how did you go from being a kid to being first selected for competitive diving? Mm, when I was in primary, primary school, a diving coach came to my school um, to select the students who are interested in aquatic sports. I was one uh, of the students who were, who were chosen and uh, she asked me to go to the nearby swimming pool mm -hmm. to learn how to swim first. Ah, okay. Yes. And then um, after a few lessons, um, I asked the coach whether I can try to jump from the three meter platform because wow. I saw this huge and tall platform uh, across the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And then she said yes. And then she noticed that I have, I'm quite brave mm -hmm. to jump from that platform. And then she asked me whether I want to take diving seriously. Well. I would imagine diving is one of the sports where there's an extraordinarily high amount of focus and concentration that's required. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure when you're sitting on that platform right on the edge. First of all, people need to know that diving is not an easy sport. It's not like a sport that anybody can take up because it requires certain skills and also amount of courage to just jump from the platform. So it's not just gravity. <laughs> yeah. Even though you are brave to jump, but you have to also learn the technique and how to do the, all the somersaults. And to be honest, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, for me, it takes some few months to learn a certain new dive. Yeah. So I have to be physically and also mentally prepared for it. Right. Mm. So for training, Usually, um, it's not always smooth or rosy. Sometimes you feel less motivated. Sometimes you just feel lazy. <laughs> Where does that inner strength come from? What, do you, what goes through your mind when you, when you need to find that inner strength? I think because I want to uh, make my family proud okay. uh, and not to let them worry or I, basically I just don't want to disappoint them yeah, because of all the supports that they have given me throughout the years. Mm. Now, let's go to the day of the competition. Mm. As you climb up the stairs and you walk up to the platform, yeah. what goes through your mind? Before every dive, I usually pray. Um, and then uh, walking up the stairs, I just think about my dive and I pray that everything will go smoothly. I will dive my best. And when I'm already on top of the platform, when I'm about to dive, I just like shut my mind and then, and then just dive according to what I've been practicing. How did you train to shut your mind? Because for many people, one of our challenges and why we feel overwhelmed is the negative thoughts, the pressure that we put on ourselves become very overwhelming. Yeah, I used to experience that before when I was starting to be uh, to dive internationally. 
um, I get to uh, overthink a lot and I get to worry about the future, about what people will think about me. But then uh, I also learn from that mistake and now I practice mindfulness regularly. I want to take you to the recent uh, Olympics at Tokyo. Mm -hmm. You had the weight of the nation's expectations mm -hmm. for you to medal, right? And talk to me about that critical dive, there were a few, where things may not have gone exactly how you had intended, right? Yes. How did you feel and how did you deal with that? Okay. Yeah, uh, my recent performance in Tokyo wasn't exactly what I, uh, I wanted mm -hmm. because I've been training hard for the past five years for this Olympics and it's, it just wasn't really what I wanted because, um, but most importantly, I also have to realize that the preparation for this Olympics and the previous Olympics was so much different. Sometimes, uh, because of the MCO, we couldn't train at all. We have to be forced to stay at home, while other countries are already um, training normally. Uh, Malaysia is still in quarantine. So I have to take that into account and then just be grateful with what I have achieved. Because for me, what's more important is the journey. Right. You have to finish Indeed. it. Yeah. But as you get out of that pool, mm. knowing that the scores didn't turn out the way you had hoped. Yeah. Talk to us about what went through your mind. Mm. Right that moment as you climbed out of that pool, as you walked out, right? Yeah. I just tell myself, yeah, sometimes uh, things like this happen and that's, what, that's why you call it competition. Yeah, anything can happen. And I just take it with an uh, open heart and I tell myself that uh, there's still four more dives to go. Just finish it and just uh, be careful and take care of your body. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us about how, how recovery plays a key part in you know, your program and, and what do you do and how do you sometimes, have you been in situations where it's been tough to recover? Hmm, yeah, for me, I use my body to dive, right? Therefore, I really need to take care of my body. Uh, but sometimes I forget that I also have to take care of my mind. <laughs> yeah, and um, sometimes it, even though your body is in the top form, but your mental health might not be in the top form. So that is why I always find some time to meditate as well, to keep it balanced. And also going to the, ah, uh, find my godmother. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, let's start with, how do you know, what are the signs you look out for when you may be experiencing mental distress? I have become less productive in my training. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, it was quite stagnant. And I, I, I'm, I think I get angry pretty easily. Okay, that's a very common mm. sign. Yeah. What about uh, sleep? What about appetite? Uh, okay, my sleep. Uh, I find it hard to uh, go to sleep when I'm getting more tired mm -hmm. and then I binge eating mm. to, uh, you know, uh, release the stress. How do you take that experience? I just have... Do you write it down? <laughs> do you... Oh yeah, uh, I keep a journal with me because I can, I, I'm quite a forgetful person so I always try to jot down everything, even small details. Right. about my training or just about my life that I find like I like to read positive quotes mm -hmm. mm, that, that can motivate me and also um, I like to find comfort with, with my teammates. And when you think about going forward because you shared with us earlier that you are going to still be training, you're still eyeing the next Olympics. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, the Tokyo achievement uh, wasn't really what I expected, but the best way to move on is to move forward and to win the next competition. That's so powerful. What are your biggest goals? My biggest goal is to be the best in the world. But recently, I find that I also need to be the best for the world. 
can you elaborate more? What do you mean by mm. to be the best for the world? It's easy to be the best in the world, but uh, you have to have certain principle of things that you can and cannot do. And it's always good to follow the right thing. Wow. Mm. Leila, thank you so much for joining us. If there's one thing that you would like to share with um, people who look up to you, right? Mm. And who just see such energy, such motivation, such passion, such drive, where does it all come from and how can people learn from you? Um, I have this uh, quotes that I always keep to my heart, which is never give up on your dream. And as long as you have faith in yourself, uh, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you too.